the cost of the living crisis and coming out of the pandemic, you have seen strikes happening really across you know, every part of the society. But it's very clear that this is something that is particularly you know, problematic on the point of view that we as airlines you know, can't really resolve that, yet we bear, bear the primary cost and the burden of the blame why it is happening. I mean, how do you explain to a customer who's flying to A to B, not even touching C, that there's a strike in point C that means that his or her flights are canceled or even delayed? And also don't forget the ripple effect that comes off from delays and cancellation. So it is a very, very tricky one. Are you preparing for it? Are you preparing for basically the destruction of the route network at some point during the summer? I mean, we are always looking to how we can mitigate, you know, these type of challenges that we see. And also remember, you know, in 2018, I think we, we probably must have spoken about it. That was also a difficult year in terms of the disruption that we're seeing that was partly related into air traffic control as well. So it's not unusual. I think it is the scale that we've now been seeing. So talking to about EasyJet yourself and where you're going to grow, and how you're going to grow. Um, I, I was looking at the numbers again, and you know, I see Ryanair uh, sort of marching across uh, Europe, um, almost unstoppable in many ways. And I'm wondering, where are you growing? Well, f first of all, I think we grew in the last quarter, we updated the market more than any other airline was there. There was more than 50% growth event last year. Because remember that we had more restrictions than any other airline if you think of the size that we have in the UK. And UK had the toughest restrictions in there. So we've had a quicker ramp up in order to, to get to the place where we are today. Look, we are focusing on delivering returns for our shareholders and a great customer experience for the people who fly with ourselves. We are focused on the primary airport. Some of our competitors are focusing on the secondary, the tertiary airport. So nobody's actually marching over us because they can't. Would you grow into larger aircraft or are you going to stick around the 320 family? Are there certain routes where you could judiciously put in a bigger plane? Yeah, absolutely we can. Look, we have over hundreds uh, of 319s, the 156 seaters, and they will be all be leaving the fleet now within the next four or five years. And that will take us to the 186 seaters and also then the 235 seaters. So we will absolutely grow naturally by just changing the fleet. But a different model, a 330, a different model into the fleet? No, I think we're quite happy with the A320 fleet that we have now. We have an order book that has firm orders now that will take us up to 2028. Uh, and we're quite pleased and we're now just hoping for the for the manufacturer to deliver them on, on time. I want to talk about sustain sustainability is the issue of the day in a sense but the industry has done a really poor job my view that in getting the message over what it's doing the industry could do more. I think you, you're right to the point that our narrative certainly hasn't been effective I think that there's something, if you talk about airspace reform as an example, which is basically the <laughs> fact that we are having a, you know, corridors You and the, I will have retired. Oh, I'm not so sure. You have it depends asked. on when you're going to retire, Richard. Uh, uh, well, you, are you talking single European skies? I am. We will have retired. No, no, but no, 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 hang on here. The narrative has to be that whatever we can do right now to start decarbonizing the industry, this is the cheapest way and the most effective way to do that. Do that get, narrative wasn't there five years ago. Do you get frustrated? Yes, of course I am. Of course I am. Look, we're signing up for a roadmap to net zero in here. And when I sit with politicians and decision makers, you know, in a small room we talk about, there is no disagreement on this. But so then, what happens? So what happens, I think that there are mostly local domestic polit polit uh, politics involved in it. I think it's about protecting jobs. I think it's about uh, the fact that you know, nobody wants to give up some, some things that has to do not so much about the sovereignty or, or the, the military's right to take airspace. As we would have seen with, with the situation right. right now, the military will take airspace when they want to. So that's not a, really an excuse.